We're here to solve this skyscraper's puzzle by Sally Alon with a consecutive scheme. You can see three, four, five, six coming around the top edge and another five, six pair down here. These really big clues look like they're going to interact in a pretty key way with a big clue like a six and even this big clue like a five. So let's start by looking at those. And in some ways, the constraint you should recognize always in a puzzle like this is that there are certain values that can't be very close to a large clue. And I'll just mark these cells in because I think it will help in certain ways. A six is seeing all but one of the buildings in this whole column, and in doing that, it has to have either a one or two in its first space, because if it were three or larger, it's leaving behind five or four or a fewer number of buildings to be seen. And as you go one further cell out, that constraint gets reduced by one degree of freedom, so you can see as large as a three when you're two cells away, but again, if you had a four here, note how you'd see a one, two, and then a five, six, seven, you could only see five buildings. You could not see a total of six buildings as you need to do and so this is a way that there's always a visual series around a clue and there's a similar thing around like this uh, cell we're not gonna sort of use it more but where you've got a one two three as a limit in the first cell in a five clue in a seven by seven grid the next position has one more removed and one more removed as constraints and so why this matters is that this six needs to see a total of six buildings when you're more than five cells away with the building no taller than a five, this is always a hidden position. So the seven and the six must be seen in these spaces. We've got to have an escalating series like this coming up the grid. And this is how we see one, two, three, four, five, six buildings. Working through that, uh, we now still have a case where the seven uh, in this space can only be in one of these two spots. And so for this five coming across, the seven has to be in the last position, and we see all of these buildings coming from uh, up, up in series. And so you can mark this more with a greater than less than symbol if on paper, but I'll just mark it with a series, but keeping a mental note that this is an increasing order. Notice that now I've marked these two buildings, which are too far away from this outside of a five, so they will always be hidden. So all the remaining spaces in this column now must be seen by this clue. So a one must be seen by this outside clue. Then a two, three, or four is gonna be in the cell and the other values are gonna be hidden. And then a five and then a six and then a seven. So really we're just using some starting skyscrapers constraints and like key observations about hidden buildings, this square and this square. We're gonna to get to where the seven is in this cell and the six now has to start with a two because of the one already in that row. And so this is a forced increasing series get up to these values, and in marking down this five, we force this over, and in marking in this four, and even the six, we get down to this being just a five, this just a four, this just a three, this just a two, and this spot just a four, put in a one over here, and we've finished four of the outside clues. We've got three more to think about, and so let's slowly work through them. One of the things that looks pretty interesting in this grid right now is actually we've eliminated a set of the digits that are normally in front of a four. A four would normally be one, two, three, four, um, because a five or larger would block too many buildings. But notice that this cell sees the one and sees the three and sees the four. And so it absolutely is a two. And up here, look in the same situation, the one and the three and the four are already observed. So we're gonna have uh, the situation where we can put in the twos in front of those uh, uh, the building cells. Got a different constraint though that looks like it might be key, which is that um, this three needs to have an increasing series coming down the seven and the one and two now that they're marked are seen. So this could be three, four, five, and this could be four, five, six, but the six is visible. So this comes down actually. So we have a three, four, and then a four, five. That means in this column, one and two don't have a lot of spaces to go. Actually, there are two twos already given. This is the last position a two can go in. This is the last position a one can go in. I got a three, four, five. We now have two, three, one, and four in this row, so we've got five, six, seven to go, but this four has to see a total of four buildings, so the six has to be closer, leaving behind this pair. We've got four, five, six coming up with one, two, seven being seen, so this is a force three, which it means the four, five is coming in quickly, as this is one, two, three. This is a force seven. We've got one and two to finish this column. We've got a one here to go with this column. We've got five, six, seven to finish this. But let's see that we have to get this four clue working. Two and four are seen, so this building is seen. But if we're a seven, it would be the last building, be too many there. So this has to be a six, not a seven. And that actually says that the seven is in this position. 
with the fives and these. We've got a three and a seven to finish this row. We've got a three and a four to finish this row. We've got a four and a six to finish this row. And we have a six and five to finish this row and the puzzle. So a lot of tracking of basic skyscraper constraints, but knowing how small values go to here. We've got a hidden building, which forces this row. We've got two hidden buildings, which force this column. And then some interesting ductions around the fours and the threes. So a lot of good skyscraper logic in this construction by Sally Alon. So thanks for watching the video and we'll see you again soon.